Have you ever heard the saying, knowing is half the battle? Well, in League, that's definitely true. Knowing the meta and picking what's good, as well as avoiding what's bad, is a super important part of the game. With over 160 champs on League's roster, it can be tough to know what's what on your own, but don't worry, I've got your back. Today, I'll be giving you our new updated tier list for patch 13.5. This is a loose ranking of what picks are the strongest for carrying in solo queue right now. We'll also be highlighting a champ or two in each role. For the stronger picks, we'll go over what makes them good, and also what their hardest matchup is. That way, you know what to ban when you want to play it, or what to pick when you're against it. We'll be starting things out with our top lane tier list. The first pick we'll be highlighting for today is Gangplank. Yeah, I know he's being nerfed this patch, but he's the type of champ that, when played well, is basically always going to be really good unless Riot completely guts him. He has super strong trading early, augmented by his barrels giving you crazy zone control. He's basically half ranged, allowing you to bully other melee champs hard. But he's also a really strong scaler, which you can accelerate with First Strike and Treasure Hunter. But one champ that you definitely don't want to have to deal with as GP is Kled. He can ignore all of your strengths in lane and keep you from ever scaling. If you're in range to poke with Q, he's in range to go in on you. Relying on barrels to zone him doesn't really do much for you either. He's so beefy that he can just trudge through them and fight anyways. The second pick we'll be highlighting up here is Rumble. Rumble has crazy high damage, allowing you to bully other laners really hard early. And when your opponents respect your damage and sit back, you can either zone them from the wave entirely, or instantly clear the minion wave and look to roam. The issue Rumble has faced in the past is that most top laners can pretty easily itemize against him, so you'd find it hard to push early leads into the mid and late game. But with his Magic Shred being heavily buffed this patch, that problem is solved. Now you can continue to wreck your foe as the game goes on. The really nice thing is, his E doesn't just give him Magic Pin, it's actually shredding your foe's MR. That way, you're helping any magic damage dealing teammates do extra damage as well. Now, as strong as I just made Rumble sound, there's one matchup that you'll find just about unplayable. Zac is impossible to deal with. His passive allows him to easily sustain against your damage early on in the lane. Then, as it goes on, he reaches the point where he not only survives your damage, but can actually just force all ends against you and win 100-0. So definitely ban him out. It's not the most common pick top lane, but you do not want to run into that one Zac player. Now, let's take a look at our jungle tier list. The first pick to highlight here is Belveth. With so many huge meta shifts happening lately, she's easily become one of the best picks in the game. Unlike a lot of other hyper carries in the jungle, you don't need to AFK farm for 20 minutes and hope your team is okay the whole time. She's actually pretty good early. Her clear is quick and healthy, and her skirmishing is strong enough that you can easily hold your own against even the best early game picks. She's also good at soloing neutral objectives on her own, which is obviously a big plus. Playing for Dragon Soul is always a good win con, and taking down Rift unlocks her enhanced true form, allowing you to snowball even harder as it allows you to mow down turrets after pulling off a gank. The go-to ban when playing Belveth is Ramus. Belveth does pretty well in the tank meta, since she usually shreds them pretty quickly in 1v1s, and can use her mobility to slip past them in fights. But Ramus is a different story. His taunt works even during your E, forcing you to hit him, which will make skirmishing super hard. But it's not just the fact that he makes you target him over his teammates. It's also that Ramus naturally itemizes Thornmail, which along with his W, makes you practically one-shot yourself when you hit him, since Belveth gets so much attack speed. Another strong pick we think is worth mentioning is Fiddlesticks. Unlike Belveth, he does fall into that stereotype of farming hard to carry later, but Fiddle makes it worth the wait, thanks to just how hard his ult can carry in fights. It's no exaggeration to say that it might just be the best teamfighting ult in the game, with the mix of CC and massive AoE damage allowing you to pretty much solo wipe entire teams. And while he doesn't have a ton of gank pressure early, his clear is super quick and healthy, and he can pretty comfortably deal with foes that try to invade him, since his drain makes him a pretty decent duelist when people get up close and personal. Unless you're dealing with Jarvan. He's able to invade you at any point in the game, starting as early as level 2, since he has his knockup to cancel your drain. To make matters worse, he can even do a lot to hinder you in teamfights. His E allows him to scout you over walls and ambushes, and his ult can be used to keep you contained after you use your ult, allowing his team to get away from you. For sure, make this your ban when you're going to be picking Fiddle. Next, here's our mid lane tier list. Here, our first talking point is Talia. Everything has lined up super well for her in the current state of the game. She uses meta items really well, especially Seraph's Embrace, since it gives her the mana to spam to shove waves and doubles as a really strong defensive option. Another, even bigger plus for her is how OP her roams are. Everyone knows the best strat at the moment is to play for bot lane, and Talia is literally built for doing just that. But none of that matters when you end up against Galio. While he isn't a super common pick right now, a good player that knows their matchups will always insta-lock him to counter Talia. 
He's able to shrug off any of your early game damage with ease and can match your wave player very easily with his Q and passive. This makes it tough for you to freely get out of lane and roam without him following you. Post 6 it gets even worse. His ult not only allows him to join the fight when you use your ult to another lane, but the shield he grants negates a lot of your burst and likely allows his team to turn the fight into a winning one. The second mid laner is a bit more of a high risk, high reward option in LeBlanc. After the buff she got this patch, she's actually looking like a pretty strong laner. Any previous issues with farming and going oom should be gone. She's also getting a pretty decent indirect buff via the changes to Cosmic Drive. She gets a lot more value out of having more AP on the item, since she's all about playing to burst down people from 100 to 0. It's very likely that you'll be going Cosmic Drive right after your Mythic to let you cycle through your cooldowns quickly in fights. When playing LeBlanc, the champ you 100% need to ban is Vex. This is maybe the most unplayable matchup in all of League. Vex is built to counter assassins in general, but LeBlanc in particular gets the worst of it. If you ever try to trade on her, she'll just W, which not only eats some of your damage, but it can also completely cancel it if she times it well. That's because Vex's fear isn't just a fear. It's also a knockdown, meaning it can stop your dash in its tracks so you can't pull off your QW combo that you rely on. On top of trades being impossible, she also has way better pushing power, so she'll always have priority for roams. If you give up a wave to roam, she'll be able to instantly shove the wave into your turret so you lose all that CS and still be able to follow you thanks to the long range on her ult. Now, let's move things down to the bot lane, starting with our carries tier list. Down here, the champ we'll be highlighting is Karthus. Really, this is a champ that any ADC main should add to their pool. That way you have an AP option when your team decides to go super AD heavy on the top side. He has an insanely strong lane phase, with good trading and even better wave clear, allowing him to neutralize most opposing lanes with ease. On top of his good 2v2 strength, he also has a global ult that allows you to turn fights that no other ADCs would ever be able to touch. He then goes on to scale insanely hard, easily being one of the best carries for just pumping out raw damage in mid to late game 5v5s. No lane is truly bad for Karthus, but if you had to pick the one matchup that has the highest likelihood of going wrong, it's Kalista. With her early game aggression, she's going to try to force early fights on you constantly. Kalista is a really volatile laner, so if you misplay once and she gets a kill, she can snowball pretty hard off of it and make the lane unplayable. Any trades are also sorta skill matchups that lean very heavily in her favor since she's always jumping around, making it hard for you to land your Qs. So while the matchup is by no means unwinnable, it's probably the one most worth banning. And finally, we have our support tier list. Down here, the pick we'll be highlighting is of course Yumi. After years of people begging for her to be deleted, Riot has done the next best thing, a rework. This version of Yumi is looking to be super strong without having one of the steepest mastery curves in the game. This means that you won't need a Yumi player with 200 IQ to actually be useful. All Yumis will now function like most other enchanters. She actually has meaningful heals and shields, and her ult doesn't feel so ultra hit or miss. Well, literally. You can actually adjust it now if you miss it, or if your foes try to flash sideways to get away from it. While a lot of Yumi's kit may have gotten a big update, she's still hard countered by engage supports, with the worst being not. If you detach and he lands a hook on you, you're basically guaranteed to die. If you stay attached, your ADC is basically laning 1v2, and it's only a matter of time before they get caught out by a hook. Nott can also just leave his ADC 1v2 to roam and make plays elsewhere. You obviously can't follow his roam safely yourself, nor can you do much to pressure his AD carry even in a 1v2. Play it safe and ban him out, it's just not worth the risk of letting him through. And that wraps things up for our 13.5 tier list. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on what's going on in the meta. Until next time, good luck out there on the rift. Later.